Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Clay, and I am the Bucks Believer. Tonight's game against the Mavericks was the sixth of a West Coast road trip for the Bucks, and it certainly showed as the wheels kind of came off the bus for the Bucks in the fourth quarter, and they squandered what was a 93 to 89 lead and ended up losing by a final score of 116 to 101. The team was once again without Giannis Antetokounmpo tonight, and they really could have used him as their second and third best players in Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton really struggled in this one. Holiday had 13 points on 6 for 16 shooting. He was missing some of the easy looks that he always generates at the basket, and he also committed some pretty careless errors as he had a few turnovers and made a few silly fouls on the defensive end that were a bit uncharacteristic for Holiday. Chris Middleton was even worse as he had 14 points on an atrocious 6 for 27 shooting from the field. Middleton relies so much on difficult shot making in order for him to succeed and when those shots aren't going in, it leads to him having games like these. He really benefits from playing off of Giannis. Obviously, who wouldn't? And in this one, when the Bucks needed him to step up his game and be the primary option, he just really struggled to get anything to go from the field. I do think that it is good that he continued to put shots up and tried to break out of his slump, but it just wasn't happening today, and that's a large reason why the Bucks were able to put up a meager 101 points on just 38% shooting from the field in this game. On the contrary, the top two players for the Dallas Mavericks were great in this game. Luka Doncic led the way for the Mavs, averaging or er, um, scoring a near triple double with 27 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists on 11 for 20 shooting. The Bucks were switching just about everything when it came to Luka pick and rolls, and that led to players like Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis being switched onto Luka quite frequently. I actually thought that those two guys did a solid job of keeping Luka in front, but in order to do that, they sacrificed giving him a little bit more space than you'd usually be comfortable with. That allowed Luka to get into his step back quite easily, and considering the extra amount of space that that shot, uh, that shot creates for Luka, uh, the Bucks just weren't able to close out, and Doncic was really able to kill them in that way. Thanasis was able to frustrate Luka a little bit for a stretch in the third quarter, but even then, Luka did start to hit shots over Thanasis, and... He's a terrific player. He's a top 10 player in the NBA, and he was really able to make the Bucks pay in tonight's game. His sidekick, Kristaps Porzingis, was also quite good for the Mavericks, as he had 26 points and 17 rebounds on 10 for 20 shooting and made four of his seven threes. Uh, the unicorn uh, was really, really lethal for the Mavericks, as he was able to get some wide open looks from beyond the three point line as the Bucks overhelped a little bit off of Luka Doncic's drives, and that allowed Porzingis to get up to that outstanding 26 point number. He also was lethal inside the paint for the Mavericks as he grabbed six offensive rebounds in this game. That's been a problem for the Bucks over the past week or so as they've had a few games where they were giving up far too many offensive rebounds. That's something that they're going to have to do a better of, but Porzingis is one of the better offensive rebounders in the NBA standing at seven foot three. So it's not like they're going to be forced to play against him every single game. Still an area they need to improve, but I think a lot of credit needs to go to Porzingis as well because he just played really, really well and was a huge threat to this Bucks defense and they weren't able to stop it. Dante DiVincenzo stepped up in this game and had a solid scoring night, putting up 22 points and making six of his 10 three-pointers. A lot of those games came, a lot of those three-pointers, excuse me, came off of pull-up jumpers where he was running the pick and roll as the ball handler, and the defense gave him a little extra space at the top of the key, and Dante did not hesitate to pull up and knock in a uh, off the dribble three-pointer and that is always a good sign because DiVincenzo isn't the most skilled offensive player on the Bucks, as my friend Rico has been uh, frequently pointing out over the past couple of games but in this one DiVincenzo was able to make himself a threat as he was knocking down those shots from beyond the arc. He also uh, was impactful on the defensive end where he came away with six rebounds and made a few athletic plays in generating two steals. The second of those steals is probably the play that most Bucks fans will remember from Dante in this one as the Bucks were losing by five. DiVincenzo jumped in a passing lane and brought the ball down the court. He uh, was had a shot contested by Kristaps Porzingis, I believe, so he decided to try to throw a behind-the-back pass to Drew Holiday. He threw the pass away. It was stolen by a Mavericks player. The Mavericks came down, 
passed it to Porzingis, and Porzingis nailed the open three to make it an eight-point game. That kind of careless mistake from DiVincenzo can't happen in late-game situations, and it seems like he has made some mistakes like that on a few different occasions for the Bucks. DiVincenzo is going to have to clean up that play, but I do think that it's good that he's getting experience in this type of close game as come playoff time where DiVincenzo is going to be equally important for the Bucks, We certainly want him to be more comfortable playing in these close games at the end of games. Bobby Portis also stepped up and had a nice game for the Bucks, scoring 20 points and grabbing 14 rebounds while making 8 of his 19 shots. Portis is always a super energetic player for the Bucks, usually coming off the bench, but he started tonight in Giannis's absence, and that was certainly the case in this one as well, as he was able to score multiple times out of the dunker spot where he caught passes from teammates and threw down some jams. A, a few of them were quite emphatic, actually. Uh, he also uh, created some shots for himself, driving to the basket, and uh, caught some passes in transition to uh, get some more finishes. Also, crashing the offensive glass was something Bobby did to some effect in this game as he grabbed three offensive rebounds and got some easy buckets for himself in that way as well. His partner in crime at the center position and Brooke Lopez also had a decent game, especially in the first half. Brooke finished with 16 points and was playing a bit of Brooklyn Brook basketball, as I like to say, where he's posting guys up and getting some turnaround fadeaway jumper type shots up. And in this one, Brooke was efficient in those, but in the second half, he just didn't have as many touches, and that's why he wasn't as effective as in the first half. The Bucks were leaving Mavericks shooters wide open from beyond the arc, and that's been something that has killed the Bucks in the past. The Mavericks made 37.8% of their threes, but when you factor out Josh Richardson's 0 for 6 effort from beyond the arc, that number spikes up to 43.8%. The Bucks can't allow opposing teams to make 17 threes and shoot that efficiently from beyond the arc. And they gave up some really great looks to the Mavericks as they continually overhelped off of the perimeter shooters on Luka Doncic's drives, and that allowed the Mavericks to generate all of these points from beyond the arc. The Bucks have had this problem in the past where they overhelp and leave shooters too wide open, and it's an area in which they're going to have to improve. They are going to give up some easier shots closer to the rim, but I think that that's worth it if it means limiting what the opposition is able to do from beyond the arc. I'm not saying you have to go all in on pre preventing three-point makes like the New York Knicks do, but I also think that they need to find a more happy medium of denying shots at the basket and stopping shots at the three-point line as right now the Bucks defense is getting killed in that way. This was not a terrible game as they only surrendered 116 points to the Mavericks who are one of the better offenses in the NBA, but they gave up too many open threes, they let Luka do whatever he wanted, and they let Kristaps Porzingis really kill them in multiple areas on the offensive side of the court. And when that happens and the team shoots 38%, you're not going to win many of those games. Let me know what you thought of this one in the comments section down below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, especially if you are a fellow Bucks believer. This is the place for you. I think that I've covered everything that I wanted to cover, so that's going to be it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.